Great. Ever since I was little, I've had a love-hate relationship with mushrooms. Uh, there's great character designs that are based on mushrooms, and I've always loved the motifs associated with it. You've got Captain Toad, Very Good Toads, the Mushroom Men, and plenty of others. On the other hand, though, I've always hated eating mushrooms. I just can't do it. It's not so much the taste, it's the texture, and the idea that it's a fungus. Another thing that happened to me when I was little was this book. This book happened to me. It's the 11th installment in the series of unfortunate events called The Grim Grotto. In this book series, and the associated live-action Netflix series, is a potentially world-ending, catastrophic, airborne spore called the medusoid mycelium. Even if it gets a little bit near you, it coats the back of your throat, and you die. Reading these books as a kid is a lot scarier of an experience than it is as an adult. And as a kid, it got me thinking about the idea of what if the thing that's most dangerous to us isn't something out there, something alien coming to destroy us, but really the mundane, something beneath our feet, the mosses and lectins, lechins, lechins, and mushrooms. What if they're out to get us? So I thought today, why don't we make a character about it? This character is one I'll be making completely in Procreate on the iPad Pro, just like any character you've seen me make in the last few years. This character exists in, perhaps, a post-literal mushroom cloud world. The spores of that deadly mushroom is everywhere, and she needs to forage in order to stay safe. Now what she's foraging for, I'll get to in a second. I really like some of the initial shapes that I lay down for this character, but like many good character designs, this one goes through a few iterations, and I'll walk you through the biggest mistake I made in this process. The hat that she's wearing here is very mushroom-like, and I'm not really sure what the in-universe explanation of that would be, whether she's hiding from sentient mushrooms or something by disguising herself as one, but really the short answer is that I think it looks cool and matches the motifs. And since this character is already so autobiographical, I figured I'd throw in another element that few people could disagree with, which is that chips are good. I personally just ordered a giant bulk order of Pop Corners White Cheddar last week just to, you know, save some time. These are another some of my favorites, the Pocky chips. And I figured, what if this character is at a shortage of clean air, right? And what better way to find clean air and food that's uninfected by spores than the hermetically sealed bag of air and crotchy chips. So this bag that you see slung over her shoulder here is filled with various bags of potato chips, corn chips, whatever she finds that's still sealed and has that safety air bubble inside of it, as well as a metal detector at her side, because I figured either she's searching for foil or some other survival thing that is buried under the ground. Now, you'll definitely see me starting to draw and redraw the same things over and over here with very inaccurate poses, and there's a reason for that. It's that mistake I was talking about earlier. At this point in this drawing, it's been a long time since I've been able to draw, draw freely, draw character concepts like this, and it's definitely showing. I'm really rusty when it comes to my drawing skills. And so the thing is, going into this, I had the idea for the video this week, had only the time available to do that, and as always, when you try and cut corners and take shortcuts, usually something's going to come back to bite you. In this case, I'm making a lot of the same mistakes that I talk about in my Loosen Up Your Art video. I'm putting myself kind of in public display by recording the video, so that adds a little bit of pressure. And I start doing things like just massaging little pieces of the sketch, which is a good step once you have something good, but trying to finesse the little details of something that you're ultimately not happy with is sort of just a waste of time. And so what you'll see me do is completely start over with a new document here, but keeping the best sketch of the previous version while I try and experiment with some new shapes. Now this newer version of the character is a lot smaller in proportion, a little bit more chibi styled, and the reason for that is just the overall flow of the shapes wasn't really enough to carry out over that full-sized character. I just really wasn't feeling it. So what I could have done to break out of that rust is to warm up, maybe do some things like life drawing, things that would contribute to a character that I'm trying to pose. Really the worst thing I could have done was go into this cold, try to do something that 
involves both the technical uh, craft of posing a character and the conceptual side of trying to come up with them in the first place. There is something to be said about taking on too much at once, biting off more than you can chew. And so I've got another video coming up that should be useful if you find yourself struggling with a piece of art. But really this is a good uh, practice to get in mind, is to break things down, figuring out what it is that you're struggling with, and see if you can't start with smaller steps, baby steps. What helped me here was to not only iterate on the character with shapes that I really kind of felt were more suitable for them, but also doing things like this very neutral pose sketch of the character instead of trying to do everything at once, putting them in this key pose. Sometimes that can be really helpful uh, and a good way to get a read on the character emotionally and the personality of them, but if it's too many things at once, you're really just going to be spinning your wheels. One thing that this neutral pose helped me to do was get better proportions for the character, some that were a little bit more dynamic. Previously, I had a torso that was a little bit too long, and so breaking that segment up as a small piece, something we talked about recently in my proportion video, uh, I kept this head section medium, the torso section small, and then the leg section large, which helps the composition of the character and keeps them a little bit more visually interesting. To speak to the technical side of things, if you're trying to learn Procreate yourself, here what I'm basically using is just the brush tool with Tara's Oval Sketch Brush, which I'll link in the description below. Uh, Dizzy Tara produces that. It's got a really nice uh, finish. If you're using a smaller brush size, you can get really pointed sort of pencil -y lines. And on the larger side, there's kind of big, broad charcoal-like strokes. So it's a really versatile brush that I use both on the brush and eraser side. And I'm also using the selection tool, the lasso, that second tool from the right on the left-hand toolbar, and using that to move, size, warp the character if need be, and overall just move things around so that I can see multiple versions of my character at once. Instead of just drawing over top of them, I like to iterate on a character that's next to an old sketch. Moving forward to this inking process that I used, I wanted a sort of dirty, rusty, muddy textured look to the character, even though I was using inked lines here. So the ink brush that I'm using is really just a cleaned up version of that same pencil, and I'm careful to keep the size of the brush similar to what I used in the pencil line. Sometimes it's very easy for information to get lost when you go from sketch to ink. Uh, sometimes the ink lines can look really inferior to the sketch lines. So I do as much as I can to match the original, retain the original information, and really be intentional with your ink lines so that you don't do something sort of mindlessly and then end up with a very wonky or changed finished image. You'll also see me adding here a little bit of a vignette or scene for the character. It's something I want to do more often. Usually I have a lot of characters just sort of sitting on a blank background, and I would really want to establish some kind of environment for characters going forward just to give them a little bit of context. I really like how the sort of mushrooms that she's walking around on and the grass around her just adds a little extra something. And finally, to add color to the character, usually I'll go in manually and use a clean brush to fill in the color. But if you have an ink line like this or an ink layer with a lot of closed spaces, you can set your layer as a reference layer and then on a separate layer, fill in colors as if you were filling in those lines, coloring in between the lines. And if you have trouble there where you still have color seeping out beyond lines that seem like they're closed, you can change the threshold by dragging and dropping the color from the upper right hand corner, pressing and holding, and then sliding to the left or right to change the threshold. For the colors on this character, I liked the idea of a contrasting sort of light pink and green coming together. And the way that I like to combine colors is typically more vibrant, but given the sort of post-apocalyptic vibe of this character, I kind of liked going into a more gritty color scape than I'm really used to. And to finish the character up, I added some texture over top with clipping masks of watercolor textures, some splotches and splatters here and there, just to give a little bit more of that worn down feel. And I set some of those to overlay layers, multiply layers, really your mileage will vary there. But ultimately, I'm really happy with how this character came out. 
and I appreciate you coming along on the journey with me. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge at 11 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday mornings. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when those videos are made available. My Patreon, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram are all at Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.